my challenge to y'all and the people who make the laws who are in this room is how can you, while you're in the position of power, protect these young people not only to survive and to make it through their daily life, but how can they thrive after they age out? And why is it that we're aging young people out at 21 years old, young people who can barely, barely survive on their own right now? Young people who don't even know about housing, young, young people who have all these things that are holding them back, not only in foster care, but outside of the system. Young people of color who not only fear for their life, but fear that when they age out, they're going to end up back in the system as a statistic. The task force really uh, addressed a number of issues. The front end of the, mostly the front end of the system, not the foster care end of the system. Although our Health and Human Services Committee is looking at those issues and trying to build support for them. The uh, Governor's Task Force really focused on the screening process, improving that, standardizing it. You can't believe how different across the state the responses were to child protection that we discovered. You can't believe how different the dollar amount was that was dedicated to the work of child protection across the state. It was an amazing disparity. And we're working very hard to bring that up so that every child, no matter where they are in the state of Minnesota, has an opportunity to enter a system that protects them. I also want to share with you that I have experienced the governor's commitment to children firsthand uh, at a much earlier time in our careers. Uh, both of us worked uh, with runaways and street kids in Boston at the same organization. So just to set the stage a little, this was basically ground zero for the street scene in Boston. And that meant that on a daily basis, we had to deal with and confront uh, known predators, some violent people who wanted to go straight through us to get at vulnerable children for a variety of reasons, none of them good. And all of us had to handle these uh, dicey situations ourselves rather than calling the police because first of all, we would have to be dealing with the same people the next day and they wouldn't be happy with us. Uh, and also just in that particular climate in Boston in the 70s, the police generally wouldn't show up. Um, so uh, I suggest to you that Governor Dayton may be the only governor in the country who at some point in his life has done direct service at the street level in a gritty and, and pretty dangerous situation. But having shared this experience with him, I think you can understand why I uh, trust the governor at a gut level to do everything that's in his power uh, to make sure that we have the resources in Minnesota first to prevent child abuse if that's possible, uh, but also to make sure that when families and children do get into child protection, the system will have the resources to respond to them effectively. So please welcome Governor Mark Dayton. Number one priority concern should be uh, what's best for that child. And also the additional funding, you know, the, the resources had been cut back for uh, the counties and then the counties in turn, the county boards who have a myriad of responsibilities had cut back on social services, either in actual dollars or certainly relative to the growing needs. So we, we had $26 million a year uh, go forward. It's not enough. Uh, there, it's never enough. It's one of the realities we face these days, as I said, with this growing dysfunction, both in terms of number of people who are afflicted and uh, then who afflict their kids, as well as uh, the severity. And when Eric Dean uh, picture came on the screen and you know, heard what had happened to him, the, the terror and the turmoil that he had endured and all the opportunities for people to intervene and uh, protect him. And, and, and no one did, and it's just, uh, you know, I, I just can't comprehend the, the horror for a child like that, of being, you know, that violently abused and having nobody to come to his or her aid. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's frankly just kind of staggering. Again, I, I thank you for Rich for your leadership and your organization, Safe Passage. I know some of you are here considering contributions. Please uh, be generous to those of you who have already. I thank you for that. It's a great organization and it's performing a really important work and we need more of it. We need to do it better and with the guidance of, of uh, Safe Passage for Children and, and others with real expertise, we'll continue to make steps forward at uh, the state level. So thank you very much. <laughs>